So the next topic is hypothesis testing. So what is hypothesis testing? Hypothesis testing in the context of this course is a statistical hypothesis. So if you still remember why we want to do statistics, is to draw inference about population by examining a sample from a population. So in the previous few lectures, so we discussed a concept about sample and populations and sampling distribution. The first step in the statistical test is to construct a hypothesis for testing. So a hypothesis is a concise statement about population mean. Okay, so at a statement that we call a no hypothesis, no difference. So for example, our hypothesis is the population mean is equal to 3.5 cm. So we will not be able to calculate the mean, whether the mean for the population is exactly 3.5 cm. So what we did usually is we took a sample, then after that we calculate the sample statistic. As we learned in the previous lecture, the sample statistic will be different from the, what we estimate. So after we got the sample statistic, we just run through the statistical test and see whether the sample statistic indeed show that the population mean is 3.5 cm. So this is our no hypothesis. On the other hand, we also have a, a alternative hypothesis because uh, it is really likely the no hypothesis will be false after we run the statistical test. If that's the case, then we will have an alternative hypothesis that we can assume to be true. So we have a no hypothesis and also an alternative hypothesis. If we accept that this one is true, okay, then we will accept this. If we did not accept this one is true, then we will accept the alternative hypothesis. Each statistical test has a pair of both hypotheses. Okay, at least a two hypotheses. So one is what we call the no hypothesis, another one is alternative hypothesis. The first step of the steady state is to construct your statistical hypothesis. So you always have a pair of the hypothesis. So this is usually done after you have formulated your research questions. So this is one of the examples of hypothesis testing. So we're going to do this uh, in detail in the next lecture. So this is just an example to demonstrate. Now I have a sample of 10 students and this is a measurement of their body height. So I want to test the hypothesis whether this sample of 10 students is from the this student population. So this is student population. Where the population mean is 160.5 05, and the same deviation for the population is 7.86. So what does it mean? So it means that now we have a population, okay, and we know the population parameter, the mean and also the same deviation. So let's say I have a sample, okay, I have a sample of 10 students, and I want to test whether this sample is belong to the population. So this sample belong to the populations. So if this sample belong to the population, that means that the mean of this sample similar to this population mean. So this is how we construct our hypothesis. For the no hypothesis, we put equal sign. For alternative is unequal. Okay. So if you, if this is true then we will accept this hypothesis. If this is not true, then we will accept the alternative hypothesis. Okay. So as we discussed in the last few lectures, okay, the sample mean is always different from the population mean. Okay. So this is a population that we don't know. Okay. So we use a sample to estimate the population mean. So there are always are differences. So how reliable of our estimate? Or we can rephrase the question in a different way. Is this sample belong to this population? Although the mean is slightly different between the sample and population, but we know that due to the sampling error, this could happen. So the sample mean is somewhere here. So the thing is, is it belong to the same population? 
So this is a sampling distribution. So the further to the extreme side of this curve, less likely this sample is belong to this population. Okay, or the probability that this sample from this population is very small. Just stay on this slide for a few seconds and think. So in this case, do you think this sample belong to this population? Can you make a decision now? So can you make an objective decision? It's very difficult at this point because it's very subjective whether you think the difference is small and acceptable for you to accept the no hypothesis or the difference is large enough for you to reject the no hypothesis. So it can be on the either side. So the statistic is to analyze an interpretation of data with an objective evaluation. So it needs to be very objective. That means that we need to have an objective criteria. Okay, only then we can make an objective evaluation. So we need to set an objective criteria, the limit, the limit for the difference that we can accept. So for example, if we set our limit is here, between here, okay, the purple color line on your left hand side and the right hand side. If this is a limit that you set, so as long as the mean of the sample is four inside this limit, then we will consider the no hypothesis is acceptable. On the other hand, we should reject the no hypothesis where the sample mean is too extreme from the population mean. Okay, too extreme in this case is based on the limit that we set. So if the population mean is fall outside of this limit that we have set, then we will reject the no hypothesis. Okay, and we will go for the alternative hypothesis. So the limit is a threshold. So for us to make a decision, so as long as the sample mean is fall outside of the limit, then we will reject the no hypothesis. So in this case, we're going to accept the no hypothesis because it's fall inside our limit. So in other case, if this is the limit that we set and this is the mean of our sample, we will reject the no hypothesis and then we will go for the alternative hypothesis because this one is four outside of the limit or what we call the rejection region so this is about hypothesis testing so just hold on if you don't understand uh, fully it's okay because we just halfway of the hypothesis testing just now we stop at the limit in the next lecture, we're going to discuss how we decide the limit. But before this, you have to understand what is a p-value and type 1 error, which we will explain in the next lecture.